So many times we get super excited about all the things that we're doing in life, whether it's entrepreneurial efforts, whether it's just chasing after our goals, or whether it is just being a leader and surviving. But the one thing that is really important for all of us is to make sure that we are doing this well, that we are not bleeding leaders, we are not bleeding entrepreneurs, we are not bleeding parents, wives, whatever it is that we are not bleeding. And so today we have a special guest with us. You all know who I am. I am attorney Jamila Moore, the legal expert and your IP and business attorney, as well as your business strategist, because I want to make sure you start your businesses the right way and that they grow the right way and that they are legally protected with trademarks, contracts, and copyrights. Now, I know sometimes I get sick of hearing about me, but let me tell you about this guest today. All right, so Chanel Chamach, she gonna tell y'all what it is, right? Is a licensed clinical social worker, empowerment speaker, business coach, and the proud CEO and founder of Healing Springs Wellness Center. This center is a community of culturally diverse wellness practitioners and therapists who provide trauma-informed and culturally competent care. Listen, Healing Springs offers in-person and online services, including mental health counseling, nutrition, Reiki, and wellness workshops. She has over 15 years experience, and she did not I think it robbery to spend time here with us today. Now, Chanel, tell them how to say your name because I know I slaughtered it. Uh, but charge it to my mind and not my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And thank you for that powerful intro. I appreciate it. So my name is Chanel Chaman Lal. That's my husband's last name. So it's a little complicated, but it's it's good. So I appreciate you trying for sure. <laughs> so we're going to just jump right in, you know. Mental health is a big topic right now. What we do with our time, how well we are, it really matters. So can you talk about your personal journey and how you got really locked into making sure that you were committed to people's wellness? Yes. So it all started for me with a broken engagement, which forced me to do the inner work to understand how my relationships was affecting my confidence, my ability to show up and to really be seen, you know, personally and professionally. So I use mental health counseling, life coaching, and, you know, I did some holistic healing to really dive deep, release those self-limiting beliefs and really build that confidence to go after my dreams unapologetically. And with that, you know, I was able to meet my soulmate. We've been together for 11 years. I was able to have the confidence to, you know, become a social worker and help women to do the same, right? That's what I, my passion and really create my dream business. But it really had, I had to turn the mirror on myself to understand how I was showing up for myself before I could achieve those things in life and feel really worthy of that. Mm -hmm. That's so good because you're already dropping bars right now. I don't know if they caught it, but I caught it. It was an event, right, that really just caused you to look within. And you looking within not only provided a transformation internally, but it provided a transformation externally. And now you are this wellness expert, business coach, all of the things, empowerment speaker, as well as CEO, and you make me think about the time, there was a period of time, maybe between 2018 and 2019, where I had a series of panic attacks. Mm. And I think at the second one, I decided that, okay, I really, like, I can't say I need to get therapy. I had to go and sit and talk with someone about the way I was feeling overwhelmed. And that process really got me to the level of wellness that I have today. I will say, I, you know, I create family members around here, Chanel. <laughs> so one of my uh, aunts is Auntie Ayama. Um, mm, and yes. in 2016, she started kind of making me look within because she has a book called Peace from the Broken Pieces. And I was like, man, man, man. But I know you've done a lot of that work. And so how do you support specifically entrepreneurs, experts, speakers, coaches, and consultants on their overall well-being as they're in these high 
high stakes positions. Yeah, so I'm so happy that you did the work and you took those steps towards your wellness. And as entrepreneurs, as experts, as people that are showing up for people and really stand, putting themselves out there, we really have to make sure that our mental wellness, our physical wellness is in the forefront, right? Because if we're not good within, then that can be a reflection of our outside, right? Especially in these high stressful you know, positions. I know you as the CEO too, right? Like we're constantly having to make decisions. We're constantly have to choose between like, do I eat the sandwich or do I like write this report, right? So there's always these decisions that we have to make. And sometimes as entrepreneurs, it really feels like it's a sacrifice from our well-being. And so I really work with entrepreneurs, especially therapists who are running their businesses to have profitable, sustainable businesses with well-being in mind, because your well-being is the priority. That is the gas fuel that keeps you going and keeps you showing up. And that should be a non-negotiable. But I think in this world that we live in, no one talks about that, like the how we need to feel, right, to keep on showing up for ourselves and for our businesses. Listen, if you take nothing else away from these first six minutes, she she dropped a bomb where she said we need to do these things well. And we have to make our wellness a non-negotiable. And this extends to organizational leaders, whether you're a leader in your church or a leader um, in a volunteer organization, wherever it is, this is really for everyone. And we have to decide that our health and well-being is a non-negotiable. I think about some of the headlines that are coming up now where you see where we're seeing people in their 30s and their 40s dying of heart issues yes. and strokes right and it's probably related here around how we are showing up in the place of decision making and our thinking i know i i didn't really plan for us to go down there, but I feel like we should lean into that because a lot of our wellness is centered on how we're making decisions and thinking and so what, what do you do with that? <laughs> I think that, you know, as the world is speeding up, especially with the, the pandemic, like, you know, we were still, we had to be, we were forced to be still. And so it's now like, everyone's like, I, I got this urgency, but when it comes to decision-making, it's like still intentionally being still. And that could be like mindfulness, prayer, really sitting with oneself, right? Because if we're constantly making decisions, like think about our nervous system, right? Like constantly being on the go, right? Think about our brain being cluttered with thoughts and social media and all that stuff, right? If we're not intentionally sitting down, asking ourselves, what do we need? Asking ourselves, what does our business need, right? Like if we're not asking the right questions and it really does take stillness to do that. And so what does my body need, right? What does my mind need, right? Um, what support that I need, right? Because I've gone with entrepreneurs to be like, did you brush your teeth? Did you make it to the gym? Like a simple checklist, which we were like, that's crazy. But I posted that one day on my social media and everyone like was like, oh my gosh, I have to ask myself and do that checklist all the time. But if you're like going so fast and you're not really paying attention to your personal and professional things that you need, then you're going to miss it. And you're going to be overwhelmed, stressed out. Your nervous system is going to be so burned out. Um, and it's not good for anybody, nobody at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's lean into this nervous <laughs> system being burnt out. Cause you know, offline, we know what's happening in my world. Now, now what does the nervous system being burnt out look like? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you think about like, we all have a tolerance to how we sh how we deal with life's BS. <laughs> I didn't want to curse on the screen. So I'm like, how do you say, how do we deal with life's BS, right? So we have this window of our tolerance, right? And when we are practicing self-care, when we're doing deep breathing, when we're having like um, supportive relationships, right? It helps us to like have our stress levels really, you know, at a moderate level. But when we are not taking care of ourselves, we're, you know, rushing when we're not, you know, when we feel anxious, 
all those things that are signs when we're having pan panic attacks, all those things are signs that something's not in alignment. And it's usually our nervous system just saying, hey, hey, ma'am, hey, sir, something's out of whack, right? Like you need to really settle down because if you're not in your window of tolerance, any little drop in the bucket, any little stress is going to throw you overboard. And that could be the depression, the anxiety, you know, it could be like um, body sensations, right? Like the nausea, certain things will, sh your nervous system is going to indicate that you're out of whack, right? And the more we do, the more we pray, the more mindfulness, the more therapy, the more supportive relationships, it really helps to fill our cup so we're not depleted. And those things are not showing up for us as well. That's so good. And I want to lean in here, especially because in the urban community, mm -hmm. um, the topic of therapy is taboo. Um, and you have folks that have normalized anxiety and panic. And so how do you, what can you say to them right now for somebody that's listening that maybe at a place where it's like, I keep hearing about this therapy thing, but uh, I don't know, I, 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 nothing's wrong with me. Like, that's the thing. And it's like, am I going because something is wrong with me or am I going because I want to optimize my well-being? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, preventative is always the best, right? So just having an outlet to talk about things, right, that you might be holding within, right? Because I always say, where does the stress go? Where do the, those thoughts go, right? That, you know, if you're going through something, they stay inside and sometimes they manifest as physical symptoms, right? That anxiety, the heart racing. So if you're going to therapy, you're able to have that outlet, release that and have that perspective and maybe even help you to problem solve different ways to manage what's going on in your life, right? Sometimes we don't listen to our body. And, and what I can tell you as a trauma therapist, as someone who pays attention to like somatics or the way your body responds, um, sometimes we don't listen to our body. We're running so fast that we don't listen when things are out of whack, right? So maybe your heart is racing. Maybe you can't sleep at night. Maybe you're having panic, panic attacks, but you're just like, oh, okay, you know, nothing's wrong with me, but your body's screaming or you're, you mentally, you're scream, it's screaming, hey, pay attention to me. Even if it's just like, what's going on? Why does my body do this right now? What do I need, right? Sometimes I ask my clients, what is your body telling you? I need rest, right? Like they intuitively know, but if you're going so fast and you're not checking in with yourself, you don't really, you can't really see that. And you're like disregarding it. We're coming to therapy. We slow you down enough to understand what's happening and what is the source of your stress so that we can help you navigate that. So I think therapy can be both preventative and it can be if you're experiencing things to come so that we can help support you, especially as entrepreneurs, because we juggle so much. We juggle so much. <laughs> That 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 is so rich and so good, and it makes me think about the piece around this theme here, around self awareness and mm -hmm. being self aware of your needs and where you might actually be having um, stress in your body. And you are the expert at this, but I'm going to talk about talk about it in a way that I kind of know it. So. Okay we don't recognize or it is not commonly known that stress can get trapped in our body. And when stress is trapped in our body, it leads to all of these like physical ailments and things of that nature. Talk to me about the danger of that. Y'all, we going in deep today. Y'all should be. <laughs> well, I said, I said, we going in deep. Um, <laughs> what I could say is that the medical system, the medical model will make you feel like your emotions and, like emotional health and your physical health is not connected and they are, right? And so stress can definitely lead to like continuous stress can lead to heart attacks. It can lead to, again, even the panic attacks, which can feel so scary for people, right? You can't breathe, your heart's racing, you know, um, it just feels like you're about to die, right? Like that can feel so scary for some people. Oh, like stress kills, right? So if you're not managing your stress, you know, it can, 
lead to mortality, right? We don't want to go that far, but even just kind of, you know, the way that we show up um, in our body. And I think a lot of us are so disconnected from our body. We've never really paid attention because we've never been taught to just sit down and say like, oh, what do you think this back pain can be? Because I could tell you like back pain might be connected to anger, right? Like I could tell you certain things of what your body's trying to tell you, right? But if you're not really sitting down and really doing some mindfulness or even a body scan, I always tell people, just scan your body from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. Just like intuitively feel what it feels in your forehead, what it feels in your your throat, your chest, right? Like, what are you picking up? And some people will be like, tightness or butterflies in my stomach or tightness in my chest. Okay, what does that mean? Oh, I was, you know, stressed today. I didn't have a moment to eat, so I'm nauseous, right? Like, even just those indicators of just like taking a five-minute check or even a three-minute check of what are you feeling, right? And if you continue to ignore it, the louder the louder it gets. Sorry, my screen. Oops. Yeah. So Sorry, it gets, yeah, if you okay. continue to ignore it. So that can lead to like the heart attacks that can lead to not being able to get out of bed, having a mental breakdown. Right. So it can get really extreme. It can be a subtle and as a whisper or as loud as like you in somebody's hospital. Right. So you have to pay attention to these things, you know. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of something that I say, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Um, and ignorance of your health um, really just causes you to go into a state of deterioration that you probably don't even realize. Mm -hmm. And I had this thought a few weeks ago, I was driving down the street and I looked at someone and I was like, man, health, that's the one thing that we think is not an issue until it shows up as an issue. And we've done damage year after year, day after day, second after second. And we show up at like 35 or 45 or 55 or whatever that age is with an ailment, with a habit that we built here. And one of the things that I want the audience to really take away is we have to become relentless at pausing and finding time to get still to mm -hmm. assess where we are. Y'all getting some free therapy on Well put. Right now. Well put. Well put. I love it. And I worked in the hospital for about five years. So I've seen all angles. And that's why, you know, here at Healing Springs, we provide that holistic care. So the one stop shop for your mind, body, and spirit, because we know that everything plays a part. Like, you know, the way your body is showing up, right? The way you're feeling mentally, right? Um, and even just like your relationships or how things are going, stress levels at work, right? We really assess everything to make sure that we put the pieces of the puzzle together to get you the right care and support that you need, right? Um, so I love that assessment piece and I've seen it on both ends, right? Like the physical and the mental. Um, and that's why we created the center, to, especially for people of color, because, you know, we can't sit still. We can't sit still. So it's like, let me let me help you out. Okay, let me help show you, you know, the reasons why it's important to to take care of yourself in all aspects. That's so good. So, you know, some of us ambitious women and men that are listening, you know, we, we love to go after our personal and professional goals and business goals. Um, and a lot of times to our detriment, let's just keep it real. What? mindsets do we need to start to take on to make a shift um, to kind of balance out ambition and wellness? Yes. I always say, especially um, to my ambitious um, women entrepreneurs, I say, what's the sense of making millions if you can't enjoy it because you're sick or you're tired, right? Or you're burnt out, right? So really think about that. Like, what I'm creating, like my legacy, and even that, like, you know, I always hear people say, I'm creating this like generational wealth and this legacy. I'm like, well, I want to be here to enjoy it too, right? I work so hard, right? <laughs> so even just that, like, you know, take care of yourself so you can enjoy the fruits of your labor, right? Um, and that you can be here to enjoy the fruits of your label. So that labor. So I would say that would be the first, right, to prioritize your well being. Um, the next thing is just, 
really uh, have enjoyment outside of business. I know we can get tunnel vision, right? But I always say that you want to be able to have enjoyable relationships, right? You want to be able to travel. You want to have that work-life balance. So again, because then the, the question is, why am I working so hard, right? And I think that assessment of like, why am I doing this, right? You know, and so there's other spheres of your life that's as important as running a business, right? So I think, you know, what brings me joy is another mindset, right? And I would say too, is just being able to be present, be present, right? Be present. <laughs> Cause I know we'd be like thinking about the past and the, and the future, right? But there's so much things that was once a dream for a lot of us ambitious people that grounding in the present and grounding in gratitude is really just going to bring more fulfillment. And you can just give yourself a high five or a pat in the back like, I did this, like this was a dream, right? So be present and really show that gratitude to how far you've come. And I think that will center you and you'll have more fulfillment. That is so good. Um, we, you know, need to make sure that we're being present. Let me make sure I got it down. We need to make sure we're prioritizing self-care. And then we make sure, need to make sure we're doing things that bring us enjoyment that's outside of our day-to-day -day, uh, business, day-to-day -day job, day-to-day, -day, whatever it is. Um, and I want to lean in here because I think there is a piece where some of, us, some of us may be confused on what self-care is mm. because I know some people, and at some point I might've thought this at two, um, self-care is like going to get pampered. But what are the misconceptions with self-care? You break it down. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, li I like where you was going. I like where you was going. I mean, that's like a, a like, if you think about the dimensions of self-care, right? Like, so you have the dimensions of self-care, which it could be those like luxurious things. Like I'm a spa junkie. So, you know, you'll catch me on the spa like once a month. But what are the daily practices that you're doing for yourself, right? To feel good, to, you know, um, to show up, right? And so that could be as simple as like going to bed early, right? I know when I was grinding, starting the business, I was staying up late, <laughs> late at night. And now I'm like, I'm in by, bed by 10. That laptop is closed. We is not doing that, right? So really even just modifying your sleep schedule, um, getting movement. A lot of us had to shift to virtual, right? Or hybrid. So there's less movement than it was before. So really getting some movement. And sometimes it's just like walking the dog. Now that I got a dog, it's forced me to have to go outside more. <laughs> so, right? Finding ways to do those daily practices that can that will become compound of effects right versus like i'm gonna take a vacation well sis you're gonna take the vacation this week but be burnt out next week so can you do anything to modify your lifestyle or schedule to feel good on a daily basis right so it really is that it could be very simple and then you can save the luck stuff for you know you can save those for like good you know scheduled times in the month or every couple months you know, but it's really the, just those, and it could be a simple, it doesn't have to be a complex. That's so strong because I don't know if folks are thinking through every day, how they're taking care of themselves. Um, and sometimes they're just like looking for a relief from surviving. Mm. I just want to push you to say that self-care is way more than relief from surviving, sitting in front of the TV yeah, that's cool, but you probably need to do something more to be still and get into that place of mindfulness, like she mentioned, to really assess where you are, decompress like the day and the stressors, and then figure out like, ha, huh, how can I, you know, really take on what's happening with me? One of the things that I'm working on doing a, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> and that is pausing throughout the day at least once and just laying down and just like doing a dump of my thoughts mm -hmm. and then just asking God to kind of take those thoughts 
Um, and what are you saying about what I'm thinking? And what are you saying about my circumstances? Because, you know, as a believer, we're supposed to give our cares to him. And so I realized I'm taking on too much of God. Why, why do I want to take on his job? I, I am. I I'm not all know it. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just Jamila. And so I think as we're growing in our well-being and going through the dimensions of self-care, you might want to put that something for right too. <laughs> can you trade can you trade that mark trademark that for me? <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, like really thinking through that like is a huge deal because it's like, man. Like we have to really assess our levels and dimensions because where you were 10 years ago is not where you are today. And if you're using that self-care practice for today, it's outdated. It's outdated. Yeah. And I, what I also find about self-care is that people discredit what they're doing that feels that is self-care, right? Like, so if you're spending time with your child or, you know, I love dancing with my son. We just put some music on, we dance it, right? Like things that people think self-care is so grand. So they discredit the things that they're doing to feel good. So even take inventory of some of the things that make you feel good on a daily, you know, and then even add more of that, right? Or more time of that, right? So that's something, some other advice I would give too. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to lean in here. So, um, Chanel's, uh, you know, global practice and things is international. She does it in Jamaica. <laughs> you know, uh, she does a lot. <laughs> um, but one of the things that you kind of brought a, a light on to me and another of our colleagues is um, this thing around like attachment styles and how that shows up in our life. And if we're going to live life well, we have to like come to the place where we know and understand that we need others, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we're not well, our relationships won't be well. And so how do we kind of navigate getting a pulse on how we are relationally to make sure we're showing up well in that space too? I think, you know, that's great, you know, bringing that up because relationships are all around us, right? Like we have our work relationships, we have our, you know, platonic relationships, we have our intimate relationships. You just really can't avoid them unless you just gonna stay home by yourself, right? <laughs> so, so I think really taking an assessment of how do I show up in my relationships? Do my relationships bring me joy and fulfillment, right? Do I find that I have a lot of conflict? Um, when I had my broken engagement, I started dating again and I found that I was dating a lot of emotionally unavailable men. And I was like, okay, one, okay, maybe a coincidence, two, questioning. And I was like, three, it's probably a pattern, right? So really understanding and really un asking myself, why is that showing up in my life? And you know, doing my own work, I realized I had abandonment issues from not having a father around, right? And that abandonment issue can not only show up in your, you know, intimate relationships, but even when I have a team and they leave, it was like this trigger. So again, going to therapy really helped me to see how I show up and react in relationships and what type of people was I attracting in my life, right? And and just assessing, is it like productive? Is it joyful? Is it causing me a lot of, you know, stress and discomfort, right? So really looking at that because you can't avoid relationships and, you know, that's just, just, that's just fact, right? In that sense. I know that that's really good. Um, and I think, you know, a theme here is we have to be willing to put the mirror up. Yes. Yes. We, we we just have to be willing to put the mirror up and we have to be willing to say like, oh, this is not, you know, ideal, but this is the reality. And when we're not really facing reality, we're not going to live well. Mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the things that you said mm -hmm. is like, even though you're in the mental health space, you have, you know, availed yourself to other mental health professionals to make sure that you're staying on track. And I think um, that's just a note to the power 
of utilizing that relationship to have people outside of you to help you think through things. Because I recently realized, even though um, I have, you know, a network of people that the majority of my processing is done alone and internally. Mm -hmm. And then I was realizing the detriment that that was, that the impact that it had on me around me just over processing things by myself. And so um, I'm back in therapy again. And I feel like I'll always continuously um, proactively go to therapy, especially when there are transitions happening in uh, my life. And it's helping me to understand how to leverage people in healthy capacities, because when you come from places where you not, have not experienced the most healthiest relationships, you may take that as a belief system around people. And again, if you're not the same that you were 10 years ago, then you have to update everything. Absolutely. It's like updating your computer, right? Like, you know, when they do like software update, right? But I, I love that. And uh, what I'm hearing too is like the community, like really being intentional with your community, right? And you can have different communities of friendships or support, right? And that part of this entrepreneur, you know, lifestyle too, is that we can be alone a lot and process or not really have people that understand our journey. And so having your spiritual community, having your entrepreneurial community, having your, you know, your fun friends that you just like, hey, you want to go to Beyonce, <laughs> right? Like really being able to like have that because it really just makes life more fun. And if there are people that are no longer serving you, it's good to update that too. Like reassess and determine like that's no longer serving me, even if they did 10 years ago or a year ago and really being able to assess that as well, right? That's so good. And you make me lean into this space where if we're going to do life well, the reality is we're going to have to be great at asserting boundaries, mm -hmm. point blank and period. But then how do you navigate setting boundaries with those longer, those like lengthy relationships that have been in your play, that have been in your life for a long time? And you've been making update after update after update and your updates may be slower. So you're like, Ooh, yeah, this is affecting my wellness. How do you, how, how would you coach somebody through that or counsel someone through that? Yeah. I love that you brought that up because, you know, it can be hard outgrowing people or outgrowing situations with them, right? Like if you're upgrading and they, and they might be slower or not, I think part of it is really being able to communicate I think a lot of, you know, there's people who are just like, okay, I'm done with you, right? No one really even takes the time to be like, hey, I'm feeling this way, or, you know, we don't hang anymore, or we're on like different paths, right? And try to problem solve together if that person is up to it, right? But if you truly feel like they're a detriment to your mental well being, your wellness, then you might have to set that boundary. And that could be like, well, I used to see them every day. Maybe it's just once a month and I have an exit plan, right? Or if you really feel like you just really outgrown that, then you, you know, you have to make that decision for yourself. But it doesn't have to be an all or nothing. It could be like really being able to have that conversation or deciding how much can I tolerate of that person. Um, and if it's just really that bad, then you you have choice, right? You don't have to stay in something that no longer serves you, right? No, that's so good. And y'all, she the, the mental health expert just gave us permission to have exit strategies. Bye. <laughs> yes. right? Like you might need an exit strategy because this person is affecting your well-being. If they're affecting your well-being, they're affecting your productivity. They're in your mental space in a way that they shouldn't be. So, you know, that that's that's just, you know, real. And so, you know. Personal growth is continuous. It's a process. It's something that we all have to lean into. Do you have any resources or tools that you kind of lean into um, with your own personal development or that you can recommend for like our entrepreneurs, experts, leaders, et cetera? Well, I would say that um, being able to like I love to read and some people don't. But like, you know, there's audiobooks, there's podcasts, right? really that continuous learning, right? And really stepping outside of your box um, is going to be important, right? Um, the other thing is having like coaches and mentors. And 
it doesn't only have to be for business. Like I have a spiritual uh, um, coach. I have, you know, a business coach, right? I surround myself by with experts in different areas, right? My personal and professional team, right? <laughs> so that's important for your growth. Um, I think too, is like having purpose. And for some, most people, it's like their faith, right? Um, if you don't believe in that, like at least something like that mindfulness or something that you can just help to ground you and help you during times of like struggle, right? Because, you know, you have to tap into something that keeps you going. For me, it's God, right? But some people it might look a little bit different, but what is your why? What is your purpose? What can you lean on when times get difficult, right? So really having that. And I think that's for growth, right? Like that resilience, that resilience is going to come because life is going to life, right? And we all go through challenges and it most times makes us better, right? Like that pain and transformation you know, helps us to stretch, stretches us. And I would say like another, like one of the tech tools I love is that keeps me accountable accountable with my mindfulness is Insight Timer, which is a meditation app on your phone. And you can have it for like three minutes, five minutes, um, an hour, if you want to be a pro <laughs> person that meditates, right? But like, and it gives you a little reminder, like, hey, meditate right now. Um, but it just gives you a accountability on being still, again, still with those thoughts um, so that you can have that mental space. So I love Insight Timer. It reminds me all the time. And I like to meditate laying down. So don't let nobody tell you how you want to meditate. Meditate laying down, fall asleep, whatever feels right to you. <laughs> but just having, you know, the, the, the community, the support, and the mental space and it's going to be important for your growth. Mm -hmm. No, that's so good. That's so good. And I think through, you know, that tip and folks even having, you know, a resource to help them start, like maybe you start at one minute, three minutes, five minutes until you build up the stamina for more. Um, you know, as we're walking through seasons of continuous transformation, uh, what are what are like the the thoughts that you have or things that you want us to kind of know to be able to be flexible and embrace change? Mm -hmm. I would say you know the self awareness, right? Just always checking in with yourself, checking in with your thoughts, checking in with your environment, right? Um, I'm so big on the abundant mindset, right? Like I'm all about like seeing the opportunity, right? Seeing that there's opportunities and resources everywhere. Do not limit yourself, right? And so even when there's difficult times, it's like, what is the lesson? What was the lesson for that, right? Um, or, you know, at least this happened. It's not minimizing, but it's really just kind of, instead of that doom and gloom, it's really helping you to be more resilient, right? And, um, you know, you don't have to do it alone, right? There's people to support you, whether it's a therapist, whether it's a trusted friend, you know, when you're going through your journey and your transformation and your growth, you're going to need people around you to support you and cheerlead you on, right? And, and mindset is everything, right? The way that you see challenges or even growth or opportunities, you know, it, it's important to lean into that mindset. Okay. No, that's so good. That's yeah. so good. As a man thinking, so he is. <laughs> yes. I love your proverbs. I'm like, yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so any final thoughts on this topic for our entrepreneurs, our experts, or leaders, or consultants? Yes, I would say prioritize yourself, right? Like when you're well, your business as well. It's like a well-oiled machine. So prioritize yourself and do not do it alone, right? There's going to be people that want to support you. So lean into those people and you can have it all in life, love, and business. Okay. <laughs> No, we thank you for that reminder because some of us don't think we can have it all. And speaking of having it all, if you are an entrepreneur, you want to make sure you connect 
with me at I am and more. Um, you can visit me on any social media handle there and also go to uh, the website to sign up for a free discovery call for the one stop shop for entrepreneurs. Chanel will tell you five minutes when we will transform a lot in yes. your business. Yes. <laughs> Don't <answer>. put off. <laughs> But the value that you could be receiving because she just told us we need that network. And one of the things why we have I am and more presents the journey to more is like I'm concerned about the whole entrepreneur. Like, I don't know any attorneys out here making sure you you get the mental health support that you need. Um, you get the financial support that you need. But that's really my heart and why we show up here week after week to be able to serve you all to make sure that you're growing well. Yes, I love it. I love it. <laughs> thank you so much. No problem. We are so excited and we thank you for pouring into us. I know we're going to be rewatching this for weeks and weeks and saving this so that we can come back to it. Um, we thank you. And y'all, this is how you connect with Chanel. Um, you can connect with her personally on her personal pages. And then um, from a business standpoint, if you need some counseling at HealingSpringsWellness.com, we look forward to seeing you all in the future and serving you all in the future. Be more, do more, and be well doing more on your journey to more. Take care, everyone. Bye.